Howard was born 66 years ago at the foot of these mountains in Borneo, where his tribe, the Dayak Basap, lives. We call these the Marang Mountains. We've climbed to their very tops, all the way up there. I've been everywhere. We searched for caves, but we did it little by little, a little bit at a time. I've been everywhere, I tell you, and I've explored it all. These mountains, which we can imagine hold thousands of caves, are a dream come true for a caver like me. Since 1992, I've been exploring Borneo in search of the prehistoric traces hidden in these caves. With a team of archaeologists, we've uncovered astounding 10,000-year-old paintings. All of this would have been impossible without the help of the people who know these mountains best, and above all, Tuit, who has become a friend. This is the greatest explorer of these mountains, Pak Tuit. Ah, Naik Kesana. OK, OK. Pak Tuet's been roaming through these mountains for 40 years. Somewhere in a cave down there, you'll find it's written, Pak Tuet, 1966. Nicknamed the Dayak of a Thousand Caves by his fellow villagers, Tuet has a good reason for exploring each nook and cranny of these incredible cliffs. The nests of swallows or swiftlets. These birds spend 40 days building nests out of their protein-rich saliva. Unfortunately for them, their nest is edible. Once reserved for emperors, the nests nowadays sell at over 4,000 euros a kilo to rich Chinese who use them in soups reputed for strength and vitality. En route for Indonesia, a 13,000 kilometer trip. For the 16th time, I head to Kalimantan, the term for the Indonesian part of Borneo. I'm on my way to Tuat's home, near the mouth of the Bengalon River. But this time, our goal is not to find new archaeological caves. Mm -hmm. 